More, I'm joined on set by our international affairs editor, Angela Diffley. Angela, good to see you. Yes. Tell us more about what's behind this meeting in Brussels. Yes, so this is a, a pivot, it's called in, in diplomatic circles, although it's not quite as straightforward as that. Uh, I think we have a map uh, to show. Uh, so Armenia and Azerbaijan uh, have on many occasions gone to war over the disputed enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh, which is surrounded by uh, Azerbaijan, and there are a large number, or were a large number of ethnic Armenians in that territory uh, who claimed it as part of Armenia. In uh, September 23, uh, Azerbaijan managed to capture that territory, uh, and uh, Armenia had a an arrangement, a treaty with Russia that Russia would more or less uh, uh, look after the interests, uh, peace keep, but also look after the interests of the Armenians in that territory. And uh, Armenia felt extremely let down. 100,000 or so Armenians were displaced. Uh, they are now in uh, Armenia. And uh, at this point, it became very clear that Armenia could not really rely on Russia for uh, its security, and certainly uh, those displaced Armenians who were in Nagorno-Karabakh uh, were extremely uh, disgruntled. Uh, since then, uh, the Prime Minister has had little choice, really, than to uh, diversify uh, uh, his interests. Uh, he's been severely criticised, Pashinyan, uh, within Armenia for what happened. A lot of people said he failed to put the plight of Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh on the international uh, map in the way that other disputed territories are. Uh, but he has, since then, uh, tried to uh, become closer to the the Europeans. From the Europeans and the Americans, what is good about this is that they are interested in uh, Armenia's cooperation in preventing uh, what has been the obvious circumnavigation of some sanctions on Russia. Uh, and Armenia can really help in, 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 in stopping that. So that's something very clear. So uh, Antony Blinken and Ursula von der Leyen today, uh, the European Union has announced 270 million euros of help uh, for Armenia and uh, the US 65 million euros. Uh, that help will be very much needed in Armenia. And in both sides, there is an interest in this uh, rapprochement. So Armenia pivoting towards the West, away from Russia, Angela, but just by virtue of its geographical position, Armenia really does have to hedge its bets here. Yeah, it does. It's it's in a very awkward position geographically. Uh, Turkey is very wary of this uh, rapprochement uh, by Armenia with uh, the United States and uh, the European Union. Turkey, of course, is traditionally an ally of Azerbaijan in this dispute, and Turkey is watching this very carefully. Also, uh, you know, Armenia has a, a, a very uh, volatile region. Russia is not a friend of the West. Iran is not a friend of the West. Uh, Armenia is bordering these areas. Also, the European Union itself buys oil and gas from Azerbaijan. It's all very complicated. It's not a straightforward, uh, tidy pivot. All of this is extremely complicated. Armenia at one point floated the idea of applying to join the European Union. Uh, historically, there are uh, some ties between uh, um, Armenia and Europe. Of course, it's a Christian country in an area where uh, many of those countries are not Christian. But that is uh, 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 extremely unlikely ever to happen. Uh, yeah. So a complicated region, and uh, there are reasons on both sides for wanting this rapprochement between the European Union, the US, and Armenia. Yeah, and indeed difficult even sometimes to even identify the various sides. Angela, thank you so much for that. That's our international affairs editor there, Angela Diffley.